Welcome to the Velvet Acorns Notebook. I'm Heidi May of the Velvet Acorn Designs, and this is a space where I share my love for knit and crochet, sprinkled in with a few other interests, books, recipes, or whatever else I think might be fun to share. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Today I'm drinking coffee with a little bit of cream in my Linda Renee Pottery mug. I've shared this before. I love her mugs, they're beautiful, they're perfect size. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, um, I guess I'll start with what I am wearing. Uh, today I have my feather cardigan on. Um, last, yeah, last episode I wore my feather sweater and this is the cardigan version. I designed this in Brooklyn Tweed Arbor colorway crumb. I, th I think it might, this colorway might be discontinued. I feel like I heard that, but I, I am not positive. Either way, they have absolutely beautiful colors. There's so many to pick from. <laughs> um, and the yoke color work is done in spin cycle, dream state, stay ready. Yeah. <clears throat> Their sweater here and it's not super cropped my jeans top is like right let's see, about right here and the sweater sorry <laughs> comes down to about there so just like right at your pocket kind of yeah just have it paired today with a kind of a dress and jeans and a t-shirt <laughs> and a hat it's a don't fix your hair kind of day just put a hat on <laughs> I do that all the time <laughs> okay so I wanted to share, sorry, paperwork. Um, I also have two other of these sweaters knit up. I did this one for my daughter. It's now too small. But um, this one is knit up in also Brooklyn Tweed Arbor in colorway Gale and the Spin Cycle Dream State in colorway Mississippi Marsala. So that's super fun. I love this Mississippi Marsala. It's all other yarns are just so fun the way they <laughs> transition through color. It makes it so exciting because each row you're like, oh my gosh, which color are we going to move to next? <laughs> okay, and then I did this other one, which I wanted to bring up. Super fun. Right, this one I did also for my daughter. Um, this one I knit up in um, Lion Brand Wool Ease Worsted in colorway natural heather and then the uh color work I did Peyton's Croy Sock in colorway brown rose merrill and I held it double strand through here which created a really pretty um nice transitions all the colors in there just turned out really nice my daughter absolutely loves this one her favorite color is pink so <laughs> anything pink and purple and well basically unicorn type feelings she's in she's all in <laughs> so yeah so I have those three I thought it would be fun to share those just so that you could see different yarns on the same design I just thought that would be kind of fun um yeah okay I'll grab a quick cup drink a coffee Ooh. I'll grab a quick cup wow I cannot talk today <laughs> I won't even try Okay, a sip of my coffee. That's really what I was trying to say. Anyways, um, I was gonna share what I'm working on. I should share the bag. I like to make my own project bags when I can. So this is my bag I'm using right now. It's got all the fun sheep. They look like they're in like fun patterns. Oh, here, maybe this side. Yeah, they're super fun. Um, anyways, I usually roll the top down. That's just how I do it. But I'm still working on my lyric card again, but I've made some progress. I'm working on about uh, four designs right now. I just finished up two and they're in their next stages and I just wound the yarn and I'm getting ready to start their sister crochet designs. So I'm super excited to do that. I'll be starting one today. <laughs> yeah. um, but this is my lyric card again. I, last time I showed it, I think I had divided for sleeves and I was about here. 
I believe, if I can remember correctly. And I've made it through my body. I just divided, oops, um, for pockets. I've got my top of my pocket and I'm about that far into my pocket. So I'll complete my pockets, get my bottom rib, and then pick up my sleeves, front band, block, and wear. Yay, my favorite part. <laughs> just get to wear it. Um, oh, I should probably talk about the yarn. This is um, Knit Picks Wool of Andy's Tweed in colorway uh, Wellies Heather. Um, oh, wait, I have a label. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't. Well, I have one, but it's wound around. <laughs> Hold on a second. I can do this. I just have the yarn wound around it, but this here's the label. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I love this color. It makes me think of a snowy night sky. I love it. Mm, my favorite. <laughs> Dark neutrals, yes please. <laughs> okay, so that's what I'm working on. One of the things I'm working on. Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit today about, um, I was gonna touch a little bit on gauge and a little bit on picking. Uh, what size to make in a pattern. So yeah, um, yeah, let's do that. I have notes, just little notes to myself. Don't forget to bring this up, don't forget to bring it up. <laughs> okay, so, okay. So one of my questions was, do I prefer knit or crochet, one or the other? And the answer to that is no. I love them both. I love, I've been doing them both for so long. They both hold a really special place in my heart. I absolutely love, they each give you different fabrics. They all have, or they all, <laughs> they both shine in their own ways. Um, yeah, I really enjoy it. I love working up the, whichever one I start with, whether I start with the knit one or the crochet one, it really depends. I have no set way and then I'm always so excited to see I wonder what it'll, the sister will look like I wonder if it will work up the same way yeah or it obviously won't work exact same but I'm always so anxious to see what the um similar one works up in the other medium so yeah I love them both um I know that um sometimes and it depends it's this is totally personal. Sometimes crochet works up a little faster for some and that can be a real draw because it's like, I just want to work this up. I want to do something quick. And so boom, 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 crochet, off we go. Um, I know there's a lot of draw for knit because um, a lot of people are, are drawn to the fabric. Um, yeah, I, I just love them both. I, I can't, I could never pick a favorite. <laughs> um, and then um, I had a question the other day that I thought I would bring up and she, uh, uh, what was I gonna say? Wow, I just lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, the question was, does the kind of yarn you use matter? Honestly, I always, a question like I say, use the yarn you love. Use what makes you happy. If, um, yeah, that's really the most important thing because if, if you don't love the yarn you're working with, then you probably, yeah, you should do, do what you enjoy. Do what you love, always. Um, the one place that this, can affect um, what you're working on is if you're choosing yarn for a very specific pattern, you'll want to pick a yarn that can obtain the same gauge as the pattern so that you are at least obtaining the same size or obtaining the size that the part pattern is intended for. Wow, I apparently I need more coffee this morning. <laughs> um, so um, the gauge in the pattern, you can make a swatch measure your gauge, and um, then you can know, what do I need to do to adjust this to obtain the gauge of the pattern? So for example, um, I get a lot of questions about my bulky and super bulky weight yarns, and a lot of questions are, can I just make this up in a worsted weight? And honestly, to do that, you would have to do a, a complete pattern rewrite because that's gonna come up at a completely different gauge. That being said, you could take a worsted and work it up at the gauge of a bulky, super bulky weight yarn. However, the fabric is going to be very different. You're gonna come up with a very loose, open fabric um, 
yeah, it's going to be very different. I have a couple swatches that I worked up just to kind of give a an example on this. Um, uh, so these swatches I did work in the exact same needle size. Uh, so um, I didn't try to, uh, I didn't get the same exact gauge, but you can at least see the, that, the fabric difference that you would get by just switching straight over. So um, this is in a bulky weight five on a US 11, my first swatch. And then I did uh, a worsted weight on a US 11, just so you could kind of see, and you can kind of see me through it. So you can see that the fabric is real open. Um, you can see it like my hand. <laughs> um, and then I was gonna lay them next to each other so you could see like this. Um, my rows are fairly close, which is really surprising, but my stitches are extremely different. So if I was to go straight over and just start working that same pattern, my finished piece would come out ex much smaller, much, much smaller. So um, like with questions like this, sometimes I suggest you might try holding your worsted weight double strand and that, and then work up a swatch and see if you can obtain that gauge of the pattern. So that gives you an option to kind of play around with gauge. If you have a, if you have your heart set on a lighter weight yarn, maybe try holding it double or triple to get that gauge for those heavier weight um, designs projects. Uh, yeah, that, that's one way to do that. Um, I, oh, and I, you know, I was just going to say, I don't know if I quite touched base on this, but I will. Um, so when you're, uh, working up a swatch, um, and you can play around with your needle hook sizes to adjust that gauge and then make sure you like the fabric that you're obtaining. So I have a daughter that knits super tight and every time I'm always bumping her up a needle or two to kind of loosen that work and try to, usually she has to go up needle sizes to obtain the gauge in a pattern. And then I have another daughter that she's just, she knits really loose and everything has always got a lot of yeah, just loose. So I'm always having to drop her down a needle size or two to try to tighten up that work and to capture her gauge. And that you just never know. So you got to play around with that to kind of find the fabric you like um, or to obtain the gauge and make sure you have the fabric you like with the yarn you've chosen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> make sure I got all that out right. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was picking a size in the pattern. So um, patterns, uh, when like in the pattern, it usually, or will most of the time say approximate finish measurements. That means it's the finished measurement of the actual sweater. So this is what the sweater will approximately measure once you've completed it. So um, if the pattern says like positive, negative ease, what their meaning is like this pattern is intended to have four inches of positive ease. So if you had a bust circumference for of like, let's say 35 inches, you would wanna look for a size in the pattern around 39 inches. That's gonna give you that intended four inches of positive ease. That wiggle room, if you will, that the room, the amount of room in the sweater beyond your natural chest circumference. So that's positive ease. And then negative ease is when you, what you're working, like for a sock, for instance, let's say your foot measures eight inches and then your finished sock measures seven inches. When you pull it on your foot, you're going to have that nice snug, cuddly fit, uh, that negative ease. And same for a sweater. You could uh, work up a sweater that is as a one to two inch intended negative ease, and you're going to get that nice form fitting sweater. So that's what they're, that's what patterns are meaning when they're saying positive ease, negative ease, fitted versus wiggle room. So, um, uh, typically, uh, what I like to suggest when picking a size, I like to say, pick a, a top or a sweater or something you really enjoy the fit of and measure that, or maybe measure a couple of them. So you kind of have a idea of the fit you enjoy. Some people like a two to three into positive ease. Some people like, you know, five to seven inches or more, you know? Um, so if you take that measurement 
keep those notes so you always kind of know where you where you personally like to wear your pieces that way you can kind of go through the pattern read down and be like okay I like my sweater with five inch lapel so I'm going to make this size because this size will be five inches from my natural chest circumference and that's usually what I do I always tend to go up a size or two because I like wiggle room I um with a yoke sweater like this is probably uh the most fitted I like my sweaters, which typically is about two to three inches of positive ease. Uh, that's where I usually, and then um, a raglan, I can go anywhere from two to six, maybe even seven. <laughs> and then a drop shoulder, you can really get a lot of positive ease. Um, or, I mean, you can get a lot of positive ease with any of them. I tend to wear a drop shoulder with the most positive ease and, you know, anywhere from, I don't know, four, three, four, all the way on up to wherever. And of course, um, different patterns, like if they're intended to be fitted, then like with negative ease, then you would just measure your natural bust circumference. Let's say it's 35. If it's intended to have two inches of negative ease, then you would want to make the 33. And then you would have that nice two inch that the pattern is intended. Um, as same as the positive ease, you know, maybe it's supposed to have a positive ease of 10 inches. So if your natural was 35, then you would want to look for the size that has a 45 inch uh, chest circumference. And that's the size you'd pick. That's, um, and again, playing around or like going off what the pattern inches are intended. And then also writing down what your personal, uh, what you personally like to wear and, and find a happy place in there. And, you know, sometimes you can even kind of get, sometimes patterns will jump from like a pretty big distance. Like let's say uh, one of the sizes jumps from a 36 all the way up to like a 39, maybe in the next size. So you have all these inches in between. Sometimes depending on your gauge, you can just go up one needle size and still make that 36, but you'll fall in between. You'll get like an in-between size if you want it to kind of, you didn't want to make jump all the way to this next size, but this one is just a little smaller than you thought. You can play around with your needle sizes and kind of get an in-between size. So that's kind of fun to play around with also. Again, with the yeah, swatching up your squares and just see, play around with the fabrics and the yarns and all. I know um, not everybody loves swatching, but I love it. I love all the blocks. I, I have a drawer just filled with a bunch of different swatches and sometimes I love to just dig in and look at them because they're all just so pretty. <laughs> um, yeah, so if anybody has any more questions on that, just if you want to pop them below or, or uh, send me an email, I am happy to um, dive deeper into this or if there, you know if there's more anything just let me know I will do my best I will write them down and I will note that for the next episode absolutely for sure <laughs> um okay what did I oh I did bring a book today and I did bring a recipe <laughs> okay let's see okay so my book I wanted to share today is a book that I've read. I mentioned in one of my last uh, episodes that I like what they call magical realism. I didn't realize that's what it was called until I had a tendency to pick a lot of books in that genre. And then finally I was like, oh, I love magical realism. And then one of my friends actually said, oh my gosh, you love magical realism. Have you ever read... Um, Sarah Addison Allen and I was like oh my gosh she's one of my favorites so we were laughing because it was like oh my goodness like she has wonderful magical realism um the first book of hers that I read was the girl who chased the moon this book is just so it's so magical and just warm heart you just I think I read it up in one day I don't do that very often <laughs> I just usually have so much going on but I think I literally picked this up and I just couldn't set it down I kind of just I was immersed and I was like oh my gosh oh my gosh this is so cute but um she has a handful of really great books um another one that she has that's wonderful is called Garden Spell that one's really fun I believe there's a sequel to that one <clears throat> but the uh, name of the sequel escapes me. Anyways, um, she's absolutely worth looking into. She has really fun, and, and they're not super big, so they're kind of a quick read, um, and I love butterflies. I 
the butterflies are. I just love butterflies. Um, I'll just share a really quick story. Um, we lost my dad four years ago and um, we were driving up in the mountains to uh, spread his ashes and um, it was really beautiful. It was, you know, uh, but it, sorry, uh, when we were driving back down through the mountains, we were swarmed by thousands of butterflies. There were so many butterflies. It literally looked like this. It felt like it was just snowing butterflies and it was the most amazing moment <laughs> for my family and I, um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that, um, butterflies have a very warm place in my heart. They always have ever since a little kid and now they even do more. So, um, yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> I also, so I brought a recipe today. Um, one I want to make <laughs> instead of one that I have made. So I can't speak, um, that it, I don't know what it tastes like yet, but when I make it, I will report back. And then maybe if you make it, you could re let me know what you thought of it. Anyways, so I found this one. It's roasted garlic spaghetti squash lasagna boats. I just thought that looked really warm and cozy and very fall. Mm, I thought maybe with a kale Caesar salad. I think I've mentioned that before. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just thought this would be a really fun meal to make. So that's the recipe to share. I will link that below. I will try, I will link everything I uh, talked about down below for anybody who's interested in looking for anything I talked about. <laughs> I think that I, I keep looking over here because I made notes. So <laughs> I just want to make sure I talked about everything I wanted to. I, um, yeah, I think I did. I think I got everything. Um, I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I hope you're working on something that you love or just doing something you love, whatever that is. And I um, am so grateful that you're here spending this time with me. And yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody again. This is so fun. And um, if you have any questions or just anything, just let me know via email or down below. I really enjoy this and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video. Bye.